In the early 1900s, another royal monarch made her mark on her people as a 19-year-old Queen Salote became the first and only ruling queen of Tonga. She had to grow up very, very quickly. If you want to be a, a model Tongan, well, that's your model. She did not have an easy time. You know, Tongan nobles were constantly conspiring against her males as a young female. Queen Salote's succession to the throne was rigorously opposed by the previous dynastic lines of leadership who disputed the new system of constitutional rule. In the period of her reign, after the First World War, Tonga faced huge social and global upheavals. Under the leadership of the young Salote, whose position as queen was controversial from the very inception. Not only was succession by a constitution still very much in its infancy, but then she was a woman, unheard of, right? And then she was her father's only child. So the actual succession to the throne of Tubo, you know, was very, very, uh, you know, touchy. She lived in a time where it was very difficult in Tonga to be a monarch and a queen. And um, there were still a lot of people who weren't very comfortable with that idea. And I think she pushed through that by creating opportunities for women. Um, like Langa Noa, she established that herself. And also... Um, appointing nobles and people's representatives. I think um, she created a lot of opportunities and um, she showed immense faith, I think, in what she did. Steeped in the Tongan tradition, where the sister in the family holds the central significance, the fahu, Queen Salote was noted for recognising the modern change in attitudes towards women and cautioned against what she considered were male-centric whakapālangi ways, where Tongans aspired to a European lifestyle. She used to, to take time off to, you know, to call all the students together and, uh, you know, explain to them what I now understand uh, the ways by which you developed your bicultural knowledge. Interpreting uh, Palangi culture to Tonga back then was not easy because our only contact with the world was one ship a month. Queen Salote was renowned for her promotion of a strong sense of Tongan national identity and she made huge commitments particularly to the education of young students. Her education initiatives extended outside the kingdom to students on scholarships studying in New Zealand where she often visited. Queen Salote um, you know, had her, um, had her students come to share the, pre the grounds of Atalanga, you know. This was their summer home. But she was like, oh, there are too many Tongan students here in Auckland. You guys need to come and stay here. Um, that, uh, that generosity, you know, that concern, um, she followed up. If you didn't do your homework or didn't go to lectures, she was on your case, you know. And I think people... Our people need it, that kind of concern. Eh? It's not like, okay, see you later. I don't know what you do at university, but just bring back the degree and the money, you know? The event that famously endeared Queen Salote to the world was the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, when the Tongan leader rode through the crowds and in deference to the young British queen, didn't put the carriage roof up when it rained. Her public successes belied much of the private tragedy of her life, however, her mother died when she was an infant and her father when she was 18. Queen Salote also lost her second son at birth, moments often expressed in musical composition and poetry. Most of her compo um, compositions um, were either before or after a certain uh, loss in her life or uh, bereavement. And um, I think she just concentrated on putting it to words and music. and. Um, Everyone still listens to them up to today. She would uh, have me sleep beside her in my own bed when I was growing up. And um, I would watch her in the evenings sometimes when she was supposed to be sleeping, um, actually 
saying uh, lyrics or m making hand movements that would eventually become uh, a dance song, something. Because as a poet and as a composer, um, the tune, the, the word, the, the choreography um, came out of her simultaneously. To ai uha i he funga mauni deni, he fo he dele a mamahi, vai tafe ai ki he o seni, o hoko ko ha ko na i i. Her poetry, you know, is so. It's like wow. It exposes her vulnerability. It it shows her as a woman. I think she's no different from all of us. Our personal lives can either strengthen you or cripple you, you know, and if you overcome uh, the traumas in our personal lives, they strengthen us. Because she was a queen, some of her needs as a woman weren't being met, you know? So medical needs, because she was a queen, she could not be treated in Tonga by Tongans because you, the body of the queen is tapu, right? You can't... I mean, you can't, dentists wouldn't go in her mouth, let alone a gynecologist do what needed to be done to make sure she was healthy, you know? So it's, it's kind of astonishing to think about things like that, you know, that what, um, what being tapu or what being a person of chiefly status can mean for a human being, yeah? Today in Tonga, Queen Salote College stands as testament to the royal leader's lasting influence. A girl that comes to this school should be uh, developed as a whole being, a whole person. And that refers to her spiritual, her physical and intellectual development. <laughs> We've recently added um, deputy ministers into government and two of them are women. So I think it's been slow, but um, at the same time, we're glad it's happened, but we still have a lot more hurdles than, um, say, men in power. <laughs> 